Income Tax 2021-2022 Software Example Reporting Self-Employment Tax Get ready to get refunds to the max diving into Income Tax 2021-2022 Lacert Tax Software You don't need tax software to follow along but you might want the Form 1040 which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov irs.gov Starting point single filer Adam Smith living in Beverly Hills 90210 We're going to have to flow through from the Schedule C net coming in here at the 100,000. Let's take a look at that flow through. We got the Schedule C here starting with the Schedule C being by the way profit or loss from business 120 at the gross. Then we got the 20,000 expenses to get us the net of 100,000 that rolls into the schedule one schedule one being called the additional income and adjustments to income line three that then rolls into page one of the form 1040 on line number eight then we also have the self-employment tax that's going to be our focus here which is on the schedule se so that's going to be the schedule se self-employment tax and we'll dive a little bit more into this calculation we looked at, at it a bit in the past so then we'll also look at some kind of more unusual type of situations where we might have like two two schedule c's uh, for example, so we've got the 14129 here <clears throat> that then go into the schedule two. schedule two being the additional taxes self-employment tax that flows through to the form 1040 page number two and there's the 14129 half of that is deductible above the line. So if I go to the self-employment calculation again half of that 7065 is deductible above the line i won't get into the, too much detail about the justification for that but uh it's kind of similar to the payroll tax type of situation but for now that 7065 is on schedule one page number two schedule num page number two the adjustments to income there's that 7065 which flows then to the 1040 page number one there it is so we got the adjusted gross income at the 92 935 the standard deduction the 12,550 we've got the qualified business income letting the software calculate that at the 1677 and then we've got the taxable income at the 64,308. mirroring that over on our excel worksheet 100,000 coming from schedule c income minus expenses we then have i'm going to skip down here the added tax, self-employment tax, that is, calculated uh, over here on the additional tax. We might go into this a little bit more detail, but we did this in a prior presentation, so I won't go into it as extensively here. We'll take a look at some other things related to the self-employment, but that comes out to the 14130. So there then is the 14130. Half of that's deductible above the line, the adjustments to income, which we can see in the adjustments to income tab, which is taking half of the self-employment tax. So that is here. That gets us to the 92,935. We've got the uh, standard deduction 12,550. I'm pulling the 1677 in from the software, letting it calculate it. And then we've got the 64,308. So there's the 64308 page two then calculating the federal income tax at the 9,900. So here is the 9,900 plus the 14,130 gets us to the 2430 for the total tax. And that should match or be close to the 2429 we see here dollar difference due to rounding. Okay, so we'll do a quick recap on the self-employment tax itself. So I'm going to go into the Schedule C, you'll recall, and we took a look at this in a prior presentation, so I'll do this fairly quickly, that the net here is, is what we're going to apply the self-employment tax to, which you can think of as kind of similar to the payroll taxes in that it's, a, it's Medicare and Social Security, but it's being applied to the net item down here as opposed to if we had, say, wages up top and we were calculating the social security and medicare on the wages and in that case we would be the employer here and we would be then withholding the social security and medicare and then paying our portion of it if we were an employee of another business then we would be paying our half of the social security and medicare in the uh, wages that are withheld so this is kind of the similar process for the self-employed individual taking the net income and then bringing that over to the schedule se the calculation then is going to be that net income multiplied times the 92.35 and then we've got two components of it which is going to be the social security and medicare the rates that are used are the 12.4 
and the 2.9, which if you are familiar with your W-2 withholdings is basically twice what is withheld on your, on your W-2 if you were an employee, because in essence, we're charging the employer and employee portion of it. That's how we're calculating this starting point at the 14,129. So let's just consider that on our worksheet where we did it maybe a little bit more transparently in a prior presentation on the additional tax. <clears throat> we took the 100,000, we multiplied it times the uh, 0.9235 to get the 92,350. Now we still have to break out the social security component and the Medicare component because the social security has a cap on it at the 142.8. So you're not gonna be paying any more uh, self-employment tax. You're not gonna be paying any more social security uh, above that amount. Although the Medicare doesn't have a cap and they actually have an added amount that you would pay over a certain threshold. So that means if we take, if we compare the cap to the 92,350, the 92,350 is lower. So we're gonna take that, we use an if then function to figure that. And then we've got the rate at the 12.44, which is twice the 6.2%, which you might be familiar with as an employee that's withheld from the W-2 wages. That's where we get the 11,451, that's the social security component. And then we've got the Medicare, which we're gonna take the 92,350, our wages multiplied times that 0.9235, times the 2.9, which is twice the 1.45, which you might be familiar with as the Medicare half, if you were a W-2 employee that would be withheld, that's gonna give us the 2678. That's where we're getting that 14, uh, 130. Now half of that, we get to deduct above the line that we, that we saw here on page one, due to the fact that it's kind of similar like if you were a C corporation, you would get to deduct as wages the 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 expense for the payroll, and then you get to deduct the payroll taxes. But I can't deduct the payroll taxes, which is half of basically the, the payroll, the Social Security and Medicare in essence. I can't do that on the Schedule C because we're trying to mirror that and come up with a similar situation for the sole proprietor because we use the bottom line of the Schedule C to figure the taxes Therefore, we had to put it somewhere else so it goes on the Schedule 1 and flows in to the 7,065 here. So that's the general concept. So now let's look at some kind of deviations from that. Let's, let's look at the cap first, and then we'll look at the added uh, Medicare tax that could be calculated. So if, for example, the income went up, so let's imagine we're at the 320 of income, 20,000 of expenses, that's 300,000 now of the earnings. So that's gonna hit the cap for, for the social security part. So if I go to the SE tax then, now we've hit the cap here. So, so we're gonna be capped off at that 142.8 instead of, instead of being taxed at the greater amount. And so that's one thing to kind of keep aware of. You're gonna have that cap that will be involved. If I go back on over here and I check that out in our worksheet, which might be a little more transparent, and I made this 320,000, that gives us our 300,000, pulls over to my additional tax, 300,000 times the 0.9235 gives us the 27750, and then we're capping it, however, for Social Security at the 142.8. So the 142.8 times the 12.4 is that 17707 portion for the Social Security, the Medicare has no cap, so it's still being taxed at the 2.9. That gets us up to the 834, and that's where we're getting this 25742, uh, in essence, the 25741, uh, 742 here. Now, the Medicare tax actually goes up after you hit a certain threshold, and you can see that you have to calculate it on a different form, which is the form 8959. It's called the additional Medicare tax. So I might then add that. I might not put it on another schedule. I'll just put it on maybe the same schedule here. And let's put it maybe to the, to, well, let's add it down here. So we're gonna say this is going to be form uh, 8959. So I'm gonna say form <clears throat> uh, 8959. And this will be called the additional Medicare tax. Additional med Medicare tax. Additional Medicare tax. We'll make that black and white. 
for the header. Let's do that as has been our standard. And then that we can calculate by taking this subtotal that we calculated after the 0.9235 adjusted self-employment income. And we're going to take that and we're going to say everything that is over the threshold of the 200,000 is going to be subject to that added tax. So I'll put the, th the threshold, threshold, I'll call it, I just made up that term, threshold of 200, and then the difference amount subject to tax is going to be equal to the 277.50 minus the 200,000, and then the tax rate is they said the tax rate was the 0.09 percent so 0 0.009 so it's pretty low 0 0.009 let's make that into a percent home tab number percentifying it add a couple decimals put an underline on it let's do that and so the added tax so the additional medicare tax outer column is this times the 0 0.09 so that's another 692. Let's format it without the decimals. Take out the pennies, same formatting. So that gets 692. So that looks good. So then I'm going to sum that up, the total, the, my total down here, additional taxes. I'm going to bring this total down. I'm going to cut that, cut it, and put it down here. And then sum up so it adds, so it adds, all the taxes involved so alternative minimum tax okay so these all the taxes so it comes out to the 26435 now and that then pulls into the first page 26435 and if i was to see it here this pulls into schedule 2 so schedule 2 now has the 25741 and the 693 and that then is going to pull into the page 1 of the form 1040 on the additional tax line, additional tax line on page two, 26434. So we've got the 26434. So that's, that's you know, just to get an idea of those, of those caps. Now, the other thing that you got to worry about or you've got to be kind of concerned with or understand is that you might have wages on the, the, w-2 income and you could have wages <clears throat> from the schedule c and so in that case let's just take a look at what that would look like and why that's a problem it's a problem in part because of these these layers that we had the progressive system where the there's a cap on social security and possibly that added amount for medicare makes it not just a flat tax so that means that if we have multiple things subject to the the tax it gets a little bit more complex so, for example, if I went back on over and I said, okay, what if we bring the Schedule C back down to 320,000? So we've got, we've got, let's bring it back down to 120,000, 120,000. So now we've got another 100,000 here. We've got the 100,000 there. And then let's say that we had like 80,000 w-2 wages so now i've got w-2 wages too at eighty thousand. the reason that's an issue is because the w-2 wages are going to withhold the the social security component of it which is four thousand nine sixty in this case and that's going to put us over the cap because this eighty thousand plus the the one hundred thousand uh that we made on the schedule c is over the threshold of the cap for social security of the 142.8. Now, the funny thing here is that this rate right here is lower because we're only taking half of it because we're an employee. So, so we would like then, if we're gonna hit the cap, to be paying this out of our W-2 income and first, right, before we're subject to the other rate, which is basically twice as much on the Schedule C. So if we look at what this looks like, we're gonna say, okay, so I already paid out of the withholdings for the W-2. So now if I calculate my Schedule SE, I've got the 100,000. There's the 92,350. 
but then it's bringing it down by 80,000, which is the W-2 wages, which were already subject to self-employment tax or payroll taxes, which is Social Security and Medicare, although only the employee half of it. And so that then brings brings us to the 62,800. Uh, so we could try to mirror that on our worksheet over here. We can say, okay, what if I tried to mirror that just so we can get an idea of what is happening on the additional taxes, the additional taxes. So that would mean like right here, I'd have to say, okay, that, that 27750, I'm also gonna deduct any W-2 wages from it because those would already have been subject to the self-employment tax or the, the Social Security and Medicare if I had any. We're mainly gonna focus on the Social Security because it has this cap that is gonna be involved. So let's make our adjustment. I'm gonna to go to the Schedule C. Let's bring that back down to 120,000. So the total, I'm sorry, 120,000. So the total is at the 100. And then we're gonna bring that back on over and we're gonna to go to the W-2 income and say that we had W-2 income, let's say of, I said 80,000, 80,000. And so now we can reconstruct our calculation over here with that W-2 income for our social security tax. Now note, you also gotta be kind of careful with the W-2 income because, and the Schedule C, because if you had like a married couple, for example, it's important to allocate the proper amount to each of the spouses because the social security is not gonna be assigned per married couple, but per a spouse. So you gotta kinda keep that in mind as well. I'm gonna add a couple rows under the social security income cap here. So I'm gonna add a couple rows here. I'm gonna say insert, and let's say that we have W-2 wages, W-2 wages. And I'm gonna say the wages were already subject to the social security, if only the half of it, the employee or employee part of it, and that's gonna be the 80,000. So now we have that there. So, so now we've got the difference. So we've got the cap less the W-2 wages, let's just call it. That's gonna be equal to the 142.8 minus the 80,000. And so now I have the social security income of the 92,350. And then I've got, and then I've got the amount that's remaining for us to get to the cap. In other words, I can ha I can then go from a to another 62,800 before hitting the cap, and I have income of 92,350. So I'm going to take now the smaller of these two numbers, which means that basically we we allowed the eating up of the cap of the W-2 wages first, which is kind of the beneficial thing to the taxpayer, because that means you're paying only the half of the tax, the employee portion. And then we're gonna go the rest of the way up until the till we hit the cap with the Schedule C portion. And that's what we're gonna apply the self-employment tax on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this one up. I'm gonna move this one up. Not that, I don't wanna adjust the size of the cell. I just wanna move, let's cut and paste it. Cut and paste. And then I'm gonna copy this format down copy the formatting down and then I'm going to take so we'll adjust the name I'll call this social security income from schedule C let's say and this is going to be social security income subject to tax for tax and I got to take the lesser of these two numbers we're going to take the lesser so I'm going to use an if kind of calculation a logic function so I'm going to say if brackets and we're going to say if this number the social security income number is less than if it's less than, where's that's not less than, if it's less than this number, then that's when you say the comma, then that's what the comma means. I want you to use that number. But if it's not, that's what the other comma means. But if it's not, then I want you to use this number. Close up the brackets. Okay, so it picked the smaller of the two numbers. If this number was larger at like 100,000, then it would pick the smaller of the two numbers. So that's gonna be our idea. So now we've got the tax that should be calculated and it should be calculated on this number. So let's change, this should be this times this. And so there's the 7787 uh, and that gets us to the 10 
462. We don't have any cap on the Medicare, although we might have that added tax, which I'm not going to get into now because it's a smaller tax. I kind of just want to focus our time here. There's the 10465 where we kind of mirrored the 10465 here. So there's that type of adjustment. If you had W-2 income, you got to be careful of that and be careful of kind of like the spouses and that you're applying the proper income to the proper spouse so that you can hit that cap in the proper way. Now let's take a look at another scenario. Let's let's say we go back on over and we don't have the W-2 income. Let's take the W-2 income out now. No W-2 income, but we have multiple Schedule Cs, let's say for one individual, not two spouses with two different businesses, but one person that has two separate businesses that we can then uh, report. So we got the one Schedule C. I'm gonna add another one. Gonna add just the minimum amount of, of data. And let's just see if I could just put the numbers down here. And let's say on the second one, 50,000 was earned on the second Schedule C. So if I go back on over to the forms, Schedule C, now we've got two Schedule Cs. We've got the other one's just Schedule C2. So there's the 50,000. The restaurant has 100,000. Now when I go to the Schedule SE, you would think maybe you need two separate Schedule SEs, but no, you've got the one because the two sources of Schedule SE income are going to the same, they're allocated to the same person. So that means we can put them both of their incomes on like the one Schedule C or this one Schedule SE because they're gonna be the beneficiary as we report the income. The income that we're reporting here to the government is going to then be aligned to calculate their benefit program. So now even though we have the two Schedule C's, we've got the one, we've got the one Schedule SE. Now note, that's different than if you had a husband and wife situation, which we talked about in the past, so I won't go into that in a lot of detail, but if you had like a husband and wife situation with that have one business that are both working on it, like as partners, for example, I'm gonna delete this business and go back up to the restaurant, then we could say, okay, if they were, if it was the taxpayers, if it was the spouse, then it would be applied to the spouse. Let's change the marital status here and say they got married. Adam got married to Eve. And so then we could say a joint, if it was a joint return, I'm going to go back on over to the forms. And remember on the rules, I won't go into the rules for the, these joint returns, but but with a married status, you got to think about whether you're in a community property state and whether or not you could file one Schedule C uh, with with the with the two spouses, or or you can the other way you could do it is treat it as a partnership with a 1065 or make an election to kind of break out. But the important thing I just want to point out here with regards to the Schedule SE is now even though we have one Schedule SE because it's basically owned by two individuals, even though they're married and they're one person for federal income taxes, for self-employment tax, for social security in particular, and Medicare, we're talking about the money that they put in because they're gonna get the benefits back. And so we have to apply this out to each individual. So if you're talking about a married couple, it's important to, to apply out the, the tax for social security and Medicare to the proper spouse so that if they're, so that they get the proper allocation to their benefit program and that means that uh, that we would need two schedule se's for each of the spouses so now we've got adam taking half of it in this case and eve again note that 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 the way you treat basically a sole proprietorship we talked about in a prior presentation if it was for a married couple because now it's basically a partnership but the two individuals are married so so you might have some potential workarounds depending on if you're a community property state uh, with regards to the reporting of the taxes that'll make it easier but just note that as you do that you're still going to have to break out the self-employment tax it's not going to have any different effect on the federal income taxes or the tax returns that you're paying here most likely but it will have an impact on who's getting allocated the benefits for the social security payments in the future and that's why you got to get that done correctly so those are basically the scenarios to take a look at also just realize that you could of course have then w-2 income that would be for the two spouses that you want to make sure that you allocate them 
in the software to the proper person so that if you hit any cap kind of situations that those again are allocated to the proper person for the calculations of the self-employment tax.